In this short video, I'm going to show you how to take this image, remove the sky, put in this sky to make this image. Oh, by the way, I did source these images so that you can download them for free. Just go to the links in the description, download them, then you can follow along. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? So here's the image that we want to remove the sky on. And there's actually a magical tool that's been there for 20 years. If you hit the E key or just go over to the eraser tool, the very second option is called the background eraser tool. And it does exactly and only what it says it does. It erases the background. Let me reset this tool so it looks like yours. Make sure all of our settings are the similar. I'm gonna reset the tool. All right, this is how yours probably looks. Tap my right bracket key to make it a little bigger. And basically whatever I touch with this crosshair inside of that circle, it's going to delete. See that? It deleted all the way back down to the transparent pixel base. And I can paint with this. So I can just drag it along and whatever that crosshair touches, it's gonna to delete from inside of that circle. And see, I have a lot of different tones here and colors. Now what I'm noticing here, do you see how I'm actually, I'm actually deleting some of my background? If that happens, that means your tolerance is too high. So that's one of the two settings you should adjust. So I command or control Z just to make sure I back up from that and come up to tolerance and take it down between 20 and 32, somewhere in that range with a smaller brush. Command spacebar to temporarily zoom in, spacebar to temporarily get the hand tool so I can move it around. And what this is going to do is it's going to let me see what I'm doing. Okay, see, I'm not getting rid of my background anymore. So typically around the edges of stuff that, I mean, obviously the reflected blue light is giving a color cast to those distant trees. Now here's something interesting. Do you see how this blue is not being removed even though it's inside my circle? That's because that's the other setting you need to pay attention to. So for this kind of situation, you would go to contiguous, which which means it's going to stop if something breaks the edge and it can't get to the other color. Just click discontiguous, which means it doesn't matter if something is isolating the color. If it's inside the circle, it's going to remove it. See that removed it from all of the tree limbs here, from all the spaces in the tree limbs. Looks like I got rid of, it looks like I'm, I got a little bit too far in. So here's the thing. If, if I'm not careful about this, I'm going to be in a bind. Why am I going to be in a bind? because I didn't duplicate my layer. I'm actually making this edit on the original file, which is generally a mistake. So what I'd like to do is just quickly go back to File, Revert Image, and here's how you would start. As soon as you open an image, hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. See here? So now I'm not working on my background. I'll turn my background off, and then I'll choose the Background Eraser tool, and I'll quickly just make my brush bigger. Now, if you get to a point where you can't see all that you've done, just add a, a layer of color beneath it. So if I hold down the command or control key while clicking on the create new layer, it will load directly below the layer I'm working on. And then you can go up to edit and fill, or you can use a shortcut. I'm going to max, I'm going to use shift delete. And then it brings open the fill dialog box and just tile it open. Um, here, I'll just go ahead and choose black. You could choose a color, whatever works best for your image. And here we can see, okay, I'm definitely missing some stuff. So let me click the white area. Now here's the thing, make sure you get back off of that color layer you just added. Command Z that, select the tree layer. Now here we go. So I'm clicking a couple times just to make sure it's really picking up all of that information. Raise my tolerance, lower my tolerance. Okay, so once I've gotten, gotten all of my edges and inside the perimeter of the, the stuff I wanna remove, a quick way to speed this part up is just command control click on that layer. Remember the only thing that's on the layer since we're erasing is destructive. Like it's literally deleting the pixels forever. But it's okay because we have our background in case we need it. So essentially if I command click on that icon, it's gonna load it as a selection. And then what I want to do is I want to delete the sky. So I need to invert the selection. So you can go up to select and invert or remember the keyboard shortcut, which is command shift I and control shift I for Windows users. And now here's the thing. Now I've selected the sky. And the reason I did this is I want to go up to select, modify, expand the selection by one pixel. Essentially, I'm telling it to go in by one pixel and delete that blue fringe around a lot of the stuff. I delete a couple, three, four times, but sometimes it doesn't do it all in the first pass. Command D to deselect. I saw a couple little weird things over here. Let's go check that out. Yeah, so if you see uh, some stuff like this, just go back to your straight eraser tool and just delete it. Just erase it. Is there any other stuff? Yeah, a little piece right up here. It's always good to go around your image at about 100%. You don't really need to go much larger. I know I'm a 
teeny bit larger. But that way it shows you everything that's wrong that will be visible if viewed or printed at 100%. So it looks like I've gotten everything. Commander control zero to fill the screen. And here's the fun part. Let's just go grab our sky. If you're still con selecting all, copying all, and going back to the other image and pasting it, you know, command A, command C, command V, that's chewing up your RAM. Your RAM remembers the last 20 things you did. This is about a 50 meg file. So if I were to copy and paste 10 images, all of a sudden I have half a gig of my RAM being wasted in the background, slowing up my computer. So here's a quick way that doesn't use your RAM after the act is complete. All you have to do is grab the layer that you want, and this is even a background layer that's locked. I'll grab it, drag it to the tab that I want it to go into. Now here's the trick. You've got to drag it now back into the image visually and let go. And if I hold the shift key, it would center, but I don't care about centering. So I'll just let go. Remember Photoshop has a top-down orientation with the layers panel. So whatever's on top is what's going to be seen. So I need to click on that sky layer and drag it beneath my tree. See that cyan line telling me where it's going to go. I hit command minus just to fit in screen. V for the move tool so I can move my sky. And it looks like it's not quite big enough for my image. Not a big deal. I can go up to edit and free transform, or I can just hit command T. Again, keyboard shortcuts are great. Hold my shift key to stretch this a little. And I like that. So one of the things I would want to do now, I'm going to hit command one to view it 100%. Now, luckily, since we're putting this selection into a blue sky and we see a couple little problems here that we'll fix in a moment. So I actually forgot to come back and fix this. I saw it when I'm editing the video. So I just wanted to pop back in and say it's no big deal, remember? Because we saved our original background layer. So we could always go back if we made a mistake. The quickest way to fix something like this is to com once you're totally finished and you have the final image compressed to the top layer, just go grab the spot healing brush tool, left bracket key to make it a little smaller, and just click around there. You get the idea. Back to the lecture. So one of the problems that we see in a blue sky is it's always starved for information. Blue is the shortest wavelength. It's where you're going to always have more noise than the other channels. And it leads to posterization in landscape photographs where there's lots of blue skies. Do you see this? Po this is at 100%. Let me zoom in more. Do you see all that noise and posterization that's starting? So the way you fix this is just go up to filter, camera raw filter. And this is the new, newest to date uh, dialog box. So a little bit of this is outside my recording area, but it's no big deal. You'll see what, what I'm wanting to show you. So I'll just click and zoom back in. I'm at about 150% to make sure you can see it with whatever video compression is happening on YouTube. Typically, you don't need to be more than 100%. I'm going to choose the detail slider. And essentially, I'm just going to say, hey, reduce the noise by around 50 to 60 pixels. If you take it all the way to 100, it's going to look more like a painting or an illustration, which is also interesting. But I just want that posterization to be, be minimized. Now, do you see how this is an, an interplay between these two? I just want to soften that. And once I get it softened, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to come back processed, Commander Control Zero. So yeah, I, I like where that's going. Now, maybe I want to make that sky just a touch of bluer. So I could add a, what would I do? I think first I would go to the color balance, just overall make make the midtones a little bluer, make the darker areas a little bluer, and might as well contaminate the highlights just a touch, just make those a little bluer. And then if I like that, I could hold down the Alt or Option key and pull it above my tree to kind of integrate the scene, to bring that same kind of color cast into the scene, which looks nice. Now I want to squish this to one layer, and it doesn't matter whether you have four layers or 4,000 layers beneath, just go to the very top layer, this active with an eyeball, hit Command, Option, Shift, Letter E, and see it squished everything to the top layer. So now I can treat it as its own image for you know further manipulation. I hope this helped. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I did. This is... Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>